Hello, welcome to this video on exponential notation and order of operations. My name is Jeff Hamilton. This is me right here. I'll be keeping an eye on you throughout the the scribble cast. Uh, you won't be able to ask me any questions here, but feel free to ask your instructor some questions. Our uh, outcomes, what we're wanting to accomplish by the end of this session, is to be able to look at uh, whole number exponents, rewrite them, evaluate them. Uh, also look at uh, exponents that are um, negative or negative integers. And finally look at the order of operations. First off then, uh, exponents. As you're probably aware, an exponent or exponential notation is used to express the product of many identical factors. An example is scientific notation. You might have seen things like 1.24 times 10 to the 6th, something like that. There's an exponent. We use that to express, instead of writing times 10 six times, we just write 10 to the 6th. So it's an easier way for us to write things. For example, here, I have four twos. So instead of writing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, I can simply write 2 to the 4th. Or here I have a bunch of stars. I don't know how many there are. But if I wanted to write that as an exponent, I could say star and then write how many there are. I think there's seven. Go ahead and, and uh, press pause and you go ahead and do the last two. Okay, notice I'll have you press pause quite often. Uh, press pause and you try the question and then you can press play again and uh, see what the answers are. Here's another one where my factor is 5, and there's 5 of them. Here I've got one where, oh, they're all the same except for this 3. So I won't be able to do anything with the 3, but I will be able to raise the 4 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's 7 of them. Okay, so that's how I can, I can write uh, exponential notation. So it's just an easy way for me, if I've got multiple identical factors, just an easier way to write those. Now if I want to evaluate them, if they say what is 2 to the 5th, I could rewrite that as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, uh, and if I multiply all those together, I do come out to an answer of 32, just a normal integer. I could do the same thing with fractions. A quarter to the 3rd means that I have 3 quarters. And if I multiply all those together, I get 1 over 64, I think. The next one, x to the fifth, oh, I don't know. I guess you can't evaluate that because you don't know what x is. I guess I could rewrite it as 5x's, but I pretty well have, have the same thing. I couldn't evaluate that one because I don't know what x is. Here's another one, 0.15 to the fourth. So it would be 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15. Let me just do that on my calculator. Uh, and I get 0 0.000506. 0 0.000506. I guess I should have a zero up front there. Okay, so to evaluate them simply means multiply them uh, together. A couple of rules with exponents that are, I guess, somewhat special is that any time that I have a base which is raised to an exponent of 1, it just means I have 123 in this case. So the answer is just 23. So raising anything to the 1 power doesn't really change it. It just means I have one of those. However, if I have something raised to the 0 power, anything that's raised to the 0 power is always equal to just 1. So 5 to the 0 is equal to just 1. We'll see an example of that on the next slide of where I come up with a 1. But just keep in, fa keep in mind that anything, even if it's, a, if it's a happy face, if it's raised to the 0 power, um, the simplification of that would just be 1. Now let's review or talk about negative exponents or negative integers for the exponents. Here's a nice thing, your, your textbook probably has a similar kind of uh, table where I have 10 cubed is 1,000. Remember that would be 10 times 10 times 10, it's 1,000. 10 squared is 100, 10 to the first is 10. So notice that each time here I'm dividing by 10. So divide this by 10, divide this by 10, 10 divided by 10 gives me 1. And that's what 10 to the 0 is, like we saw in the last slide. 
Now, if I notice that I decrease in this number by 1 each time, so if I'm at 0 and I decrease that by 1, it'll be negative 1, and then negative 2, negative 3. But if I follow the same pattern of decreasing the exponent by 1, meaning that I have to divide this expression by, by 10, so this divided by 10 is 100, divided by 10 is 10, divided by 10 is 1. 1 divided by 10, I guess I could write it as 1 over 10. Or when I divide that, that would be 0.1. Same thing with 10 over negative 2, that would be 1 over 100. Or I guess I could write that as 1 over 10 squared. Or if I wrote it as a decimal, it would be 0 0.01. And similarly, 10 to the minus 3 would be 1 over 1,000, or 1 over 10 cubed, or 0 0.001. Go ahead and try to see what 10 to the negative 4th is. Go ahead and do that. Pause. Okay, hopefully you're unpaused. So 10 to the minus 4 is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the positive 4. Notice I just flipped that on the bottom of a fraction. Or I could write it as 1 over 10,000, or 0 0.0001. All of those things mean the same thing. So basically, if I have a negative exponent like I've shown here, I can simply move it to the other side of the fraction, leaving a 1 up top, um, and that would make the exponent positive. Let's try a couple. So here I have m to the minus 3. If I want to rewrite that with a positive exponent, it would be 1 over m to the positive 3. Notice what I do with this one. I have, a, I have a negative exponent on the bottom. What do you think you might have to do to make that positive? Notice on this one I had it on the top, and I put it on the bottom of a fraction and made it positive. Yeah, you're probably thinking, right, if I have a negative exponent on the bottom, I can simply move it to the top and make it positive. If you want, I could rewrite it and say, well, x to the minus 3 is the same as 1 over x to the positive 3. Notice I have a double fraction here. I can rewrite this division symbol like this. So it would be 1 divided by 1 over x cubed. So 1 divided by 1 over x cubed. Dividing by fractions, I invert and multiply. So if I invert and multiply, notice that I am going to get x cubed like I started to at, this, uh, at the beginning. Similarly, if I have a fraction that is raised to a negative exponent, I could do this. Uh, going by powers of exponents, I must raise everything inside the brackets to this exponent. So 1 has to go to the negative 3, and 4 has to go to the negative 3. But 1 to the negative third power is just, oh, I, I guess this is what I could do. Since they're negative, negative exponents, I could flip them to the bottom. So 1 to the negative 3 becomes 1 to the positive 3 on the bottom. Similarly, 4 to the minus 3 on the bottom becomes 4 to the positive 3 on the top. Simplifying that, 4 cubed, I think, is 64. 1 cubed is 1. 64 divided by 1 is simply 64. That seems odd, eh, to get a number of 64 coming from a fraction raised to a negative exponent. But that's indeed what the answer is. Okay, so that gives you an idea, then, of working with some exponents. We didn't go through all the exponent laws. We're sort of assuming you're not too bad with those. We're just catching up with a couple little things with, uh, with negative exponents. Okay, last thing uh, to do in this session is to look at order of operations. These things have been hammered into you forever, and they're quite important, and they actually have bearing on exponents uh, when you go further into logarithms or trigonometric uh, um, uh, equations, all of our order of operations still apply. So it makes sense to just re re review them quickly. So the first thing you do when you do an order of operations, you might have heard that saying bedmas. And bedmas isn't too bad, but to, we want to expand it a little bit because when we have grouping things, we don't always just have B for brackets. They can be group any kind of grouping symbol. 
So they could be brackets or parentheses. Uh, so they could be funny looking guys like that or they could be square brackets. They could be a radical. If I have a radical, anything inside there I have to do first before I take the square root or whatever root it, it is of that. So it could also be absolute value or any other kind of grouping symbol. You do those first. Then look to uh, do any exponents. Uh, so evaluate those. And then finally do multiplication or division, whichever order they come in from left to right. And lastly, addition or subtraction in order from left to right. So just to take a quick little example, if I have this uh, expression to evaluate, I look at it and I see a multiplication, an addition, another multiplication. I know I need, I'm going to need to do this multiplication first. Once I've done that one, then I'll do this one over here. That'll be my second operation. And lastly, I'll do this as my last one. Okay, so 42 times 5, 210, plus, I can't do that one yet, 3 times 12 is 36. And 210 plus 36 would be 246. So the correct evaluation of that expression is 246. Notice that if I had done things in different order, I would get a different answer. Here's a couple others to try. Maybe press pause and try these on your own. And then uh, once you've done them, press play and see what the answers are. So in this one I have a, a bracket. I need to evaluate that first. So 42 times whatever 5 plus 3 is, that's 8, times 12. So now I'm going to need to go 42 times 8 times 12. Let me just do it on my calculator. 42 times 8 times 12. 4,032. Notice that this question was the same as the one we had on the last page, right there, except for the brackets. Makes a big difference, eh? Next question, need to do what's in brackets first. What's in brackets here? I have a division symbol, so I need to do that first. So I'm just going to rewrite the whole thing. 13 times 5 plus 2 cubed minus, uh, in brackets here, 42. Take away 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I only did one operation there. I just did that division. Now I'm going to finish off what's in brackets. 42 minus 8 would be 34. And write everything else down. 13 times 5 plus 2 cubed minus 34. Okay, after I've done all the brackets or the grouping symbols, I look for exponents. Here's one here, 2 cubed, 8. So write everything else down, 13 times 5 plus 8 minus 34. Now I've got rid of all brackets, all the exponents, now I look for divide or multiply. Here's one right here, 13 times 5 is 65, and then write everything else down, minus 8, or plus 8 minus 34. Finally, do it. Again, notice that the order makes a difference. You do add, subtract, whichever comes first, left to right. So I have to do this first, then that one. So 65 plus 8 would be 73 minus 34, and 73 minus 34 would be about 39. Not about. It's exactly 39. Notice how, rather than trying to do everything in my head, all I did was took one step, did this, then did this one, and then I, I just did one um, operation for each step and wrote everything else down. That's a good way to do order of operations. If you try and do too many steps at once, you might mess up the order. And if you mess up the order, you're going to get the question wrong. Okay, here's a couple other ones you can uh, try as well. Press pause. When you're ready, uh, try them. I'm just going to do them here quick. So uh, I would go, boy, I've got lots of brackets. I think I need to do this first, so it would be a 2 there. Oh, and then 2 plus 2, that would be 4 inside those square brackets. So I have 10 minus and 8 plus. So inside of these brackets, 10 minus 4 is 6, and 8 plus 6, 
14. That's a good one. Uh, okay, notice I did do in my head a couple of steps. So you can do a couple of steps in your head if you're careful at not messing up the order. Last one, 3 plus 5, that'd be 8. 8 squared is 64. Plus, 8 minus 11 is negative 3. Negative 3 cubed is a negative 27. Again, I did a couple of steps in order, uh, or, or at a time. 2 cubed is 8. 3 squared is 9. Okay, so on the top I have 64 plus a negative 27. Uh, that would be about 37. So 37 on top. And 8 take away 9 is a negative 1 on bottom. So 37 divided by a negative 1, negative 37 would be my answer to that one. Okay, so order of operations. Be careful. Do one step at a time. Uh, if you're having trouble with doing a couple and then mixing up the order, make sure you're, you're conscientious on you do this, then you do that, then you do the next thing. Okay, so today we have looked at exponents, and we looked briefly at what exponents are, and then we looked at um, uh, negative exponents and evaluating exponents a little bit. And last but not least, we looked at order of operations. Feel free to watch the video as many times as you need, but also practice, practice, practice. Okay, we'll see you again in the next video.